Okay, it's time to address the elephant in the room, the fridge. And more specifically, it's the cabinet that goes above the elephant, or the fridge, that's the subject of this video. The fridge is the biggest appliance in our kitchen. It's an enormous beast. Ours is 33 inches wide, and it's 70 inches tall. But the really big measurement is the depth. If you include the air gap at the back, and you include the handles on the front, the whole thing is like 36 inches deep, which is, you know, 10 inches more than the counter. Now in the old kitchen, we used to have a cabinet up here above the old fridge, and we basically never used it because it was so hard to access. It was the same depth as the other cabinets, and so reaching into it was just a chore. So why don't we just put an extra deep cabinet above the fridge? That's the typical approach, and in most kitchens, I think it's the right approach, but not in our kitchen. You see, we've got a galley kitchen which means the fridge is not against the wall. It's just out in the open here. So if we put a big cabinet over, we just think it's gonna be a big obstruction and we just don't like the looks. But we still don't wanna let all this space go to waste up here. So I'm still gonna build a cabinet up here. It's still gonna be the same depth as the others, but it's not gonna open from the front. It's gonna open from the end. So I made this great big box great big long box and this is going above the fridge and I just made it out of uh, Baltic birch for here and for the, for the front I just used some of that leftover plywood the same that I used for the end panels and like that plywood because this is going to be skinned I'm going to make a fake set of doors that are just going to go here and the real door is going to be on the end now for the front of the cabinet I could have gone through the whole process of making doors and then just gluing them into place because remember these are going to be fake doors, the real opening is going to be on the edge, but that just seemed like too much work. So instead, I just got a sheet of uh, cherry plywood and I laminated it onto the edge, onto the edge. I got a sheet of cherry plywood and I laminated it over the face and I'm just going to glue on the cherry members that make up the uh, fake door. Um, I didn't run the plywood right to the end. I uh, made a little rabbit here in this cherry so that the plywood would not be showing here on the edge. Top and bottom it doesn't really matter, nobody's going to see that. So here I'm just going to be um, planing down the boards so that they're thinner and just gluing them on the front. So I'm continuing work on the faux front. I've got two pieces on the bottom, two pieces on the top fitted and glued into place and I just wanted to stop and draw your attention to the thin stripe of polyurethane that I drew down the middle. And I did that because uh, these will be going in next, and this will be the uh, the middle pe the middle pieces. So I mean, this is going to look like you know two doors. And once these are glued down, there's going to be no getting in between there. And as I've mentioned before, I, I don't generally spray, so I'm just putting a little finish. I put that on the edge of these two pieces too. I'll be gluing these down tomorrow, I guess. And. Yeah, then I'll be chamfering the outside and we will have a set of fake doors on the edge of this cabinet. Then I gotta work on the big drawer that's going in here. It's lying on its side right now, so a tall skinny drawer. So a cabinet, of course, is just a box. And the box is pretty easy to make. A little bit more challenging to get the, the front finished the way I want it. That's all in place now, and now it's on to getting several coats of finish on the cabinet. So anyways, this will take a couple of days probably. I like three coats of finish, let it dry. I mean really, you could, you could do it all in one because it's water based. I could get it all done in one day if I uh, had the time, but I doubt I'll be able to get it all done in one day. But we are getting into the home stretch. Anyways, I digress. Now you can see what I was talking about earlier with pre-finishing that little strip in between. There's no real easy way to get a, have gotten a brush in there, so it's really good that I did that ahead of time. And yeah, this is where everybody says, you gotta learn to spray, you gotta learn to spray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not happening anytime soon. I have sprayed. I mean, I've done, uh, I have done some spraying in the summer when I can do it out in the garage. And uh, yeah, I think I've probably talked enough. I think I'll skip forward now. Watching somebody finish isn't that exciting. You know how it is. Here we are so far. It's been several days since the last bit of footage that I shot. I've been busy with doing other things, but I've got 
the cabinet. I've got the fake front doors all assembled and, and I've got uh, three coats of polyurethane on. The cabinet itself is finished. So I could, I could install this, but I want to actually have the drawer part built and fitted before I get this installed because it's a lot easier to work down here on the bench than it is when it's up in the air. What I've got here is a tall, skinny, deep cabinet. The cabinet itself is two feet tall, so like 23 and a bit on the inside, 13 and a half wide, but it's 32 and a half inches deep. And really, really long drawer slides are not common, not that I could find, and the ones that I could find were pretty expensive. And so what I have here, I, I settled on some 28 inch full extension soft closing drawer slides that I'm going to get mounted here. As I said, the whole cabinet is 32, so I'm losing about four, four and a half inches there. Um, but it was, it was like, uh, you know, $30 for a pair of these versus like $150, $200 for the ones that I could find. Maybe there's some magical supply out there for super long drawer extension slides. It kind of makes sense because your average kitchen cabinet is like 24 inches deep. And so yeah, 24, 22, 24 is sort of the common size for drawer slides. I've got my SketchUp plan printed out here that I'm working on for the drawer part. It's going to have a tall back and a very shallow front because of course we're accessing it from the side. You've got to allow a half inch on either side for the drawer slides. And then, you know, I'll work out the dimensions as I go. And I got a half inch piece of Baltic birch that I'll be using for the drawer body. And in the interest of time, I'm not going to show the construction of the drawer. It's just a box put together with butt joints and screws and glues and all that sort of stuff. So here I am a little bit later. I've got the drawer built and the slides installed. And it is a funny looking thing. I've got a tall back. It's almost 22 inches. Totally fills it. I've got some curved ends. And the front is really, really low because, remember, you will be accessing it from down below. You know, you'll be reaching up into it. So you want the front to be pretty low so that you can get into it with trays or whatever we're putting in. And the next thing I need to do is build a door that will go on the front of this. And that's going to be, you know, one of the standard doors like I've got over the rest of my kitchen. And I also need to get this out and get it finished. Polyurethane, here we come. Now we just got to get it installed. So here's the cabinet in place above the fridge. My two sons gave me a hand lifting it up here. Uh, I had some wood piled up, leveling it up. Once I had it fairly level, I had used some clamps to pull it tight to the neighboring cabinet. And then I screwed into the neighbor, into the two cabinets, pulling them together. Once I had them together here, then I had to, you know, crawl inside the cabinet and mark where the studs are and fasten it to the studs there. And I need to pull it up a bit. I'm going to be attaching it here to the ceiling because this front opening is sagging just a touch. Because you, know, you got this big opening here that's not very well supported. And that was about it. Once, uh, once I had the two cabinets together, I could take the clamps down, screw it to the wall, and Bob's your uncle. And that's just about it for my wacky sideways over the fridge cabinet. I'm sure you can see why this is not an IKEA cabinet because they don't come in sideways opening. So, you know, the rest of my kitchen is IKEA with custom doors and this one is a complete custom cabinet. And just sort of to give you an idea, like here's like a tall container that I can reach up and put in there. Again, uh, I've mentioned before, I'm 6'3", so I'm fairly tall. No problem for me. Shorter people might uh, use a footstool. You know, it may not be for everyday materials, but we're a pretty tall family, so we might use it a lot uh, 
trays, muffin trays, cereal containers, tall stuff. I'm not sure. Um, I'm glad we could use the space. I think it looks pretty good. As you can see, we still put uh, fake handles. Well, they're real handles, but they don't do anything on the front of the cabinet. So from the front here, it just looks like a regular ordinary cabinet. And so that's about it for this one. As always, thanks for coming by and spending some time in my shop. I hope you found something interesting and enjoyable and we'll see you on the next one. All right, let's turn the camera off.